that He wants to beg in your heart, urge you, encourage you in such a way, hallelujah, that you will leave here blessed today. Knowing that, realizing that, i got to ask you today, how many is ready for the Word of the Lord today? Amen. Pastor, my pastor, the bait pastor, the bass master, would you stand today, brother, and pray over this word today? Father God, the grace that we can come put our feet, Lord, under your table today. Dear God, each one of us needs your help. Hallelujah. Pastor Daniel stands before us this morning. I pray that you'll help him, oh God, and anoint him with a special anointing this morning. That your word will go out today and touch every heart here. Hallelujah. That he'll preach with love and authority and power and prominence. And I pray that you'll get glory and honor for Thank the you. remaining portion, O oh God, of this service. Yes. And I pray, God, most of all, if there's any among us this morning that don't know you, O oh God, yes, your old time convicting power will cause the tears begin to flow down faces you, this morning. O oh God, that they're not even wait to the all the call Come given. On. Our Lord, that they'll make their way to the altar Hallelujah. and out and submit to them to you this morning. Oh God, we know that I'm not interrupt your Brother Daniel, but he'll stop and pray to them, God. And, and I just pray that when all said and done today, that you've had your way in this service. Amen. We place all things in your hands. We're not counting on man, God, but we're counting on you. Now have your way. For we know when you've had your way, all is well. Hallelujah. And we honor and praise you and thank you. Jesus name. You've got a hand clap and praise. Thank you. Thank you. We received that today. And as you know, before he uh, began to pray, I called him the vast master. If you've not seen him, he caught the biggest fish of his entire life. Of his entire fishing career the other day. And I do not uh, over-exaggerate one bit, Brother Brian. I'm telling the truth. I'm standing on the Lord's platform. Amen. It was that big. <laughs> That big. It would have been a shark. It would have been dangerous. Amen. I mean, we didn't have any scales on the boat, but I had held an eight-pound bass before my hand, and he was way heavier than an eight-pound bass. So uh, it was a monster, and it was something I'll never forget. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know now how to get a net under it. Amen. And praise God. Hallelujah. But I enjoyed that time. Uh, hallelujah. Being out and being able to get away for a little bit, for a couple of hours, and, and enjoy the outside. God's good, isn't he? He blesses us with times of relaxation. But He's about to bless us in an even more profound way right now because He's got a word for us today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today I want to preach on a message that asks a question. And that question is, are you ready for the real heaven? Are you ready for the real heaven? Hallelujah. Are you really ready for what God has in store for you in His kingdom? Amen. If you're really ready, church family, I enjoy life. Hallelujah. Praise God. But it's nothing in comparison to what God has for me. Yes. In glory. Yes. Long before I ever became a Christian adult, I've been told about heaven. From the time I was a little boy and one of the first deaths I can remember happening in my family was my great grandmother Lamb. She had passed away. And I remember asking what had happened to her, and I was simply told, she's gone to heaven. She has gone to heaven. And I remember as young as, I think I was about seven or eight years old then, I remember just having dreams of what heaven would be like. I had visions uh, in my mind, in my little spirit, of what heaven was like. And so therefore, I've, I've thought about heaven a lot, pretty much all of my life. What will it be like? Who will I see? What will I do there? Jesus. Is it a beautiful, lush place with more comfort than you can ever imagine? Absolutely it is. It is. As a child, it had somewhat of a, a magical, enchanted feel about it. We've seen songs in church like, When we all get to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we would sing those songs, When we all get to heaven. Y'all know it. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Come on. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing. 
This is 1 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, he would write about, he didn't know if it happened in the spirit or if it happened in the body. But he knows somebody that was taken to the third heaven. He's talking about himself. Somebody who was taken into the presence of God. At this time, John the Revelator has not been, yet been given a revelation or a vision of heaven and eternity. Amen. So at this time, he's saying, he says in verse 9, he says, he's quoting Old Testament scripture. He says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has laid up, stored up, has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. That's a highly quoted scripture in this church. Pastor Jerry used to quote it all the time. Hallelujah. It felt so good to me when he would quote that scripture. Hallelujah. That was one of the ones I had to memorize. Amen. Can't memorize them all, but there's some that just stick right here. When you hear those scriptures, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. And I get happy when I think about that. Lord, I love You. And I can't even imagine what You've got in store for me. Hallelujah. My eyes can't even fathom it. My mind can't even think about it. I, my ears have never heard a glorious sound. Hallelujah. Freedom sounded glorious this morning. It was good to have Brother West back on the drums after a neck and back uh, trouble. Hallelujah. And the praise and worship was at a high level this morning. But it's nothing compared. Hallelujah. Hillsong, Bethel, none of them have nothing on what. I love those bands. Don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. But they have nothing on what's going to be going on in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. The praise and worship that awaits you, Christian, in the heavenlies will blow your mind. You can't even contain it right now. Hallelujah. You can't even contain it right now. We can't. It's not time for us to be able to even contain it right now. We bust wide open, brother Brian. We bust wide open. Hallelujah. Praise God. When it, so when it comes to the heavenly things that He's prepared for me, I'm reminded of a song that I heard that was dealing with me right around the time that I was about to give my heart to Jesus over 11 years ago. It was a song that had come out on Christian radio, but I didn't listen to Christian radio. I worked for a secular radio station. At that time, it played everything from Britney Spears to 50 Cent to Bon Jovi. And I had to listen to it all day because I had to check for my customers' commercials to be running, making sure they were running correctly. And all of a sudden, in the middle of Eminem and 50 Cent, came this song out of nowhere talking about Jesus. I said, what is this song doing on our station? What in the world? And it said words that I had heard a long time because I've been out of church for a long time. It said, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance before you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Hallelujah. And I began to cry. And I began to weep. Hallelujah. Praise God. And somehow or another, me and Sister Irma uh, made contact with each other. I think I started visiting the, the church over here, and they were about to have their first homecoming service in the new sanctuary. And she asked me, would I sing a song? Hallelujah. With my little filthy sin field self. Yes, I would sing a song. I came up here and I sang, I can only imagine. And something happened to me, Pastor Jerry, that didn't happen in the bar rooms and the clubs. Something come over me. I would get goosebumps there. We'd have a good song. Or T-Man would be slapping on the bass. Or on some chili peppers or whatever kind of stuff we were playing in. And I'd get a little bit of goosebumps. But something came over me that day that just made me want to cry and weep in joy. Hallelujah. And I felt conviction and joy at the same time. Knowing, hallelujah, that I needed Jesus. Hallelujah. Convicted because I hadn't said yes yet. But no, have enjoyed it. If I'll just say yes, everything will be all right. And he began to deal with me week after week after week after week. And I thought about that song. I can only imagine. And I think about that scripture. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has laid up, stored up, prepared for those who love. We cannot imagine. Hallelujah. We cannot fathom that. In another writing. To the Corinthian church. Like I said, 2 Corinthians. And if you want a scripture reference for Paul's journey to the third heaven, it's 2 Corinthians 12 too. We don't have it for you today. I'm not going to read it, but that's where you can find that. Paul speaks of being taken up to heaven, either fully or in a vision. He says, whether it was in the body of the Spirit, I do not know. But he refers to it as the third heaven. And for all of my Revelation students that were with me through the year and a half study, uh, and we would go back over information repetitively. 
when new people would come in. We talked about there being three heads. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Pastor John Hankey has come out with a book explaining this. But the first heaven you see is the aerial heaven, the sky that you can look up at. That holds the clouds and the birds and the fowls of the air can fly around it. Then there's an aerial heaven up above. That, uh, that, excuse me, there's a stellar heaven up above the aerial heaven. That's outer space. But there, those two heavens, we can get to. We can get in a helicopter, we can get in a plane, we can go to the aerial heaven. Astronauts can orbit the earth and they can get in a space shuttle and they can send, NASA can send uh, men and women to the stellar heaven. But then there's a third heaven. There's a heaven above all other heavens that you and I cannot get in any spacecraft or any helicopter or airplane and fly to. We must go there as saved people. There's only one way into heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. And that is the third heaven. That is the heaven of heavenlies. Hallelujah. Just like the temple had the holy of holies, there's the heaven of heavenlies. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the presence of God. It's the third heaven. It's the actual presence of God where the throne of God is. Amen. And in our message title today, there's a question. Are you ready? Are you ready for the real heaven? Are you ready for the real absolute heaven located in the third heaven, the, the, the heaven of all heavens? As we proclaim the resounding yes, because most people in here, I hope, would say, yes, I, I, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. But whether you're ready to go to heaven, that may be a different story. All right? So let's expound. Let's dig further. Let's speak a little bit more upon four facts concerning heaven. All right? And I'll close with that. Four facts concerning him. If you say you're ready for the real heaven, I'm going to give you four facts about heaven that you can't get around. You can't change it. You can't pray that it'll change. It is the way it is. And so if you want the real heaven, hallelujah, you got to get prepared for the heaven I'm about to talk about. Hallelujah. It's biblical. It's scriptural. It's not my opinion. It's not something I just thought of to, to tell you this morning. It's what the Bible says the real heaven is all about. Now, are you ready for the real heaven? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Now, Jesus made a promise of preparation concerning heaven. He said, if you believe in God, believe in me also. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. He said, it, he said it, it were not true. I would have told you. He said, Lo, and I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go there to prepare a place for you, I will return, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may also be. Yeah. So there's a place that Jesus is going to prepare for us. And then He's going to come back and get us in the rapture and take us back there. Amen? Okay. So, what is this place and what are the four facts Concerning heaven. Number one, there's no separation or segregation there. There is no separation or segregation there. Hallelujah. That we will not be separated by, by denominations. Jesus prayed in the garden that we'd all be one. It was man's idea to separate into denominations. We will not be separated by color. There's not a black heaven, a white heaven, an Asian heaven. Uh, uh, an Arab heaven, uh, uh, an you know, uh, uh, Indian heaven, it's all, we're not going to be separated. Hallelujah. It's man's choice to separate now. Hallelujah. But we're all coming together and living in eternity. Amen. Jesus Christ died for everybody. Newsflash. Jesus Christ died for everybody. Amen. Second Peter 3 and 9 is a, is a scripture here. It said, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of truth. All should come to repentance. Not some. Not just one religion. Not just one doctrine. Jesus Christ died for the Muslim. Come on. He died for them. He died for, for, for terrorists. That think they're going to blow themselves up and experience 75 virgins or 70 virgins in, in heaven and all oh, or whatever. I don't know what kind of crazy stuff that is, amen. But all I know is they're so committed to it, they'll die for it. Hallelujah. But yet sometimes Christians have trouble even maintaining a prayer life. And I can be guilty of that. They pray every day to something that's false. We've got the truth. 
We've got the real thing. Hallelujah. And sometimes I think as Christians, especially American Christians, we're so spoiled in what we've got and how easy and accessible it is that we don't go after it. Amen. They're going after it so hard that they'll blow up buildings and they'll kill thousands of people for what they believe. Amen. We don't need to go do blowing up buildings. Amen. But we do need to get focused. We need to get focused because Jesus is returning. And not only do we need to be ready for the real heaven, we need to get our friends and family ready for the real heaven. The return of Jesus Christ is coming Amen. soon. It's coming soon. And so it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. Amen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the whole world, the whole wide world, the whole entire world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, that's a wide spectrum, that's a wide, broad spectrum there, whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. Heaven is for everybody. Hallelujah. We, that's why He's got us all, hallelujah, down here on this earth now. He wants us to get to know each other. He wants us to learn to live with each other. But you know, the enemy wants to seek who he can destroy, who he can devour, who he can divide, who he can put divisions between. And so now we're seeing so much division, so much discord, people getting right up over everything and separating and dividing. Amen. It don't have to be that way. Hallelujah. In heaven, there's not going to be any separation. So if there is anything in your heart, Christian, I don't care how young you are in here or how old you are in here, if there's an ounce of racism in your heart, racism is hatred, hatred is a sin, we'll sit here in a moment, and sin cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. you got to pray to get it out of you. Pray it out. Well, I was raised in it. That's just the way it is. Except we're down here in the South. That's just the way it is. We just have a different way of thinking. That's, you know, I'm not nice saying everybody, amen. You've got to love them. You've got to love them in your heart. And not let anything separate you. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going to dig even deeper this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. These, these are the messages that need to be preached in today's church. If we're going to get ready for the return of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we got to get people focused. we got to get people focused on the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hatred of any kind cannot enter into heaven. Whoever you have a problem with, I'm here to tell you right now, Jesus said there's many mansions. He'll probably put your worst enemy beside you. <laughs> He said, well, I ain't going to remember that. They ain't going to heaven. Oh, you don't know. You're going to be surprised who's in heaven and who's not. You're going to be surprised who gets left behind and who gets caught up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do something about it now. Reach out. Forgive. Let yourself be set free by the power of forgiveness. Many times today, we've been raised in religion so much, and it's an extreme way on each side. We might have been raised up in a denomination where everybody said, everybody's saved, everybody's going, everybody's going to heaven, grace, 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 grace. And they've made a disgrace of grace. Amen. They've misused grace. Amen. And so we're too far on that side where we think everything's all right and everything's loose. Right. Then we might have grown up in another church where they said, la, 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 la. If you do this, you're going to hell. If you do this, you're going to hell. If you do this, you're going to hell. And then you don't know anything about grace. Yeah, right. You don't have a clue about what God's grace is all about. That's why you can't grant it to nobody. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going to keep preaching this morning. The quieter you get, the louder I'll get. Yeah. You don't know how to exemplify God's grace in your life because you don't know anything about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not an eternal security believer. But I believe that backsliding is a huge thing that could happen. It can happen. I believe in the grace of God. If it weren't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be standing here today. Hallelujah. Because of His grace. It wasn't because of my grace. It wasn't because of my worthiness. No, I'm not worthy. My righteousness is as filthy rags to Him. It's because He's worthy. He paid the price. It's nothing I did. He reached way down. Tell somebody he's he re reached so far down, He probably got His arm dirty. To get me up out of the miry clay. Hallelujah. But we've got to pick other people up out of the miry clay. Christians, you've got to put a uh, hope and a wish that somebody would stay out in the miry clay. Come on. That's not the love of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. In our prayers, we're going to be so holy, holy, holy. And then when we see sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, we're in our minds saying, kill them, Jesus. Kill them, Lord. Let them fall down right now and break the neck, Lord. Come on. Jesus love. Hallelujah. Amen. And if we need to learn about grace, we're going to 
teach grace. Hallelujah. We go, but we're also going to teach accountability. Amen. 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 And we're not going to make a disgrace out of grace. Hallelujah. We're going, to, we're going to lead people to Christ. We're going to get them discipled. We're going to explain salvation. Hallelujah. And it's our vision for this church. It's my vision. It's this man's vision. To raise up an army for Jesus Christ. That will reach out to a lost and broken world. Hallelujah. And show them His love. Yes. Yes. Let them know about accountability. But not beat them over the head. Hallelujah. So bad. That they don't feel like they can hold it up anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does anybody get anything out of this? That's just, that's just my first point there. That's my first fact. No divisions. No sections. Amen. No sections. Number two. I'm trying to hurry up. There's going to be 24-7 worship going on in. 24-7. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at that scripture. 24-7 worship's going to be going on. There's not going to be 3.5 songs, Sister Laura B. There's not going to be 3.5 worship songs. Amen. We only got time for 3.5. 3.5. 3.5. 3.5. No, 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 no. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. We're going to praise God. We're going to celebrate. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be loud. It's going to be loud. Isaiah 6 and 3 talks about a worship going on around the altar saying, Lord God Almighty, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's what heaven sounds like. And then in Revelation chapter 4 verse 8, John confirms it. He specifies. He says they're saying around the altar of God, day and night, Sister Lisa, non-stop. You look at New King James. He says non-stop. Non-stop. They're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Come on into the church no matter what kind of day you have had. No matter kind of, what kind of week you have had. And be ready to praise God. Show the children that when the, if, when the worship leader says it's time to rise, it's time to stand. It's time to stand. When I was in church, and then Sister Linda, if I tried to sit down, Mom would go. <laughs> Back here, goodbye. Got to get up. Got to get up. Got to get up. Didn't have an understanding fully of why I was standing up, really. All I knew is if I didn't, I was going to get up. Now, I don't want to hear a bunch of pop, 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 pop going on. Amen. <laughs> but what I did learn, what I did learn is that there's a reverence to worship. That even though my mind as a child wasn't fully developed to know what was going on, I knew that it was time to sing. Hallelujah. We were going to stand and we were going to praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe sometimes when I got a little tired, I'd sit down, take a break, but I'd make sure Mama won't look at me. <laughs> oh! Just stretch my legs, Mama. Stretch my legs. Amen? 24 7. It's not going to be a funeral home. It's not going to be a, a low key place. It's going to be a celebration like we've never yeah. known. Yeah. And this is the curtain call. This is rehearsal. Hallelujah. This church has always been known for praising God. This church has always been known for being a charismatic, dynamic, exciting place to worship God. Whether we're singing old hymns, whether we're singing hallelujah, southern gospel, whether we're singing praise and worship, it didn't matter. It was always exciting. It was always dynamic. It was always spirit-filled. Amen? And we're going to keep on being an exciting, dynamic, spirit-filled place to worship God. Hallelujah. So if you come in, if you come in and you hold on to the back of the pew, you know, when is this going to be over? Come on, get caught up in it. Just surrender yourself. Get caught up in it. One way to start is just lift those hands. I didn't want to lift my hands. I didn't want nobody to see Daniel Parker lifting his hands. And this was even after I got saved. I still was reluctant a little bit. I was reluctant. But then, after a couple of services, I began to raise my hand. Because I said, I'm going to tune everybody else out. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know all the things that God has seen me do and go through. So I'm just going to get everybody. I don't care what nobody sees. I don't care if one of my buddies from back in the day comes in here and sees me. Or if I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to lift my hands. And as soon as I got them up about this far, I started to feel freedom overcome me. I started to feel a heavenly liberty come overcome me. And I got them up higher and higher and higher. I want that. Sunday night, hallelujah. Sister Katina King started
started saying, it was a great thing that he did for me. It was a great thing when he set me free. Jesus died on Calvary so the whole wide world could see. It was a great thing that he did for me. Oh, I'm getting the, I'm getting the feeling on that. Hallelujah. And I was sitting like that holding Jackson. He was a baby. He, I started feeling the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hit me on the back row. Eh? And the baby, yes, you can get the Holy Ghost on the back row. Hallelujah. And I was standing right there. And the baby started sliding down. And I'm like, oh, I'm losing control of the baby. Hallelujah. I had to pick him back up. Now, God's not going to let nothing happen to your baby. <laughs> but I just couldn't. I didn't know what to do with my arms. They were like jello. I had to just, here you go, buddy. Here is Jackson. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it. Hallelujah. I got to have my hands free. I got to have my hands free. So if you see me get a little excited sometimes, it's because I don't have the liberty you do. I'm holding it to all up here. You get to have your hands free. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are lucky to be able to hold your hands free. Sometimes I might just have to stop playing a little bit and just play the song, you know, because I just want to praise God. I want to get His hands free. Hallelujah. Praise God. Spiritual. I need a spiritual Bluetooth, I guess you'd say. Hallelujah. You know what they are? So you can talk on the phone with your hands free. Hallelujah. Praise God. So there'll be 24 7 worship nonstop. Number three. There's not going to be no hiding of sin there. Amen. Oh, I thought you'd be quiet enough. <laughs> there'll be no hiding of sin there. You know why? It can't go in there. You can't take it in there. It can't be in there. Hallelujah. There's no hiding of sin. People can come into the church. They can come to prayer meetings. They can go to crusades. They can go to conferences. And you can hide in your sin. And you can be in sin. Hallelujah. Jesus wants everybody to come to, them, come to Him just the way they are. But you've got to make up your mind. If you're going to live for Jesus Christ, you've got to turn from sin. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And a lot of the guys, they want to just focus on just grace all the time. They don't want to ever preach on sin. We can focus on grace and preach against sin at the same time. That's sound doctrine. That's correct doctrine. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Sin can't enter in to heaven. Praise God. There's no hiding of sin because it cannot enter in. Here's what I like to use for that scripture. Because a lot of people say, oh, you're going to give an Old Testament scripture? Back when they used to kill goats and stuff? No. I'm going to give it to you right out of the New Testament. Galatians 5. Give me Galatians 5 of the train. Hallelujah. The best way not to have to hide in sin now is to turn from it now. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. I'm still preaching good. It's all right. I'm preaching on sin, but it's still good. It's still good. Hallelujah. To turn from it now. Not walk in the flesh. Okay? This is a daily thing. This is a daily thing. That's why Paul said, I die daily. I die daily. This is the Apostle Paul who was commissioned to write over half the New Testament, Brother Neil. And he still said, I have to crucify this flesh every day. I'm a human being just like you. I have thoughts. I have temptations. I have desires. I have these things that hit me in my flesh. And i got to crucify it every day. i got to die daily. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah. We walk then. How do we walk? How do, what do we do? How do we walk in this life? To stay away from sin, to turn from sin. What should we do? We need to walk in the Spirit. Yeah. Walk yeah. in the Spirit. Somebody say, walk in the Spirit. Walk, walk in the Spirit. Spirit. Say it again. Walk, walk in the Spirit. Spirit. Number three, walk in the Spirit. All right? Verse 16. Paul says, to the answer to this, he starts out in this scripture. He says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. He's not acting, he's not turning a blind eye to it, Brother James. He's saying, I understand what you're going through. As a pastor today, I'm not preaching an impossible message. I understand what you're going through. I'm not preaching something that's totally unrelatable. I understand what you're going through. Praise God. But you can't do everything that you want to and still call yourself saved. Amen. You can't do everything you want to do. You've got to walk in the Spirit. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to commit sins. Hallelujah. But do you repent from it? Do you learn from it? Or do you try to hide it and keep holding your fist up spiritually? God says, I'm going to do what I want to. 
and I'm going to play church. I'm going to drop something in the bucket. I, I, I'll, even, I'll even rally for this title or that title. Maybe I'm going to do what I want to do because I can't let that go. Amen. God says I'll have all of you surrender all to you. Where am I at? Verse 18. He said, now he says all these things. Then he says, but if you are led by the Spirit, oh, this is good. You are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You know why? The law can't condemn you when you're walking in the Spirit. Because the Spirit produces good things in you. Hallelujah. Fruits of the Spirit. Not sin. And so you're not condemned by the law because you're not trying to break it. I compare this to the old days. When I was in sin, Pastor Jason, if I saw a policeman or anybody in an unmarked car behind me, I'd start praying. I'd start praying. I wouldn't even say I was trying to pray. Oh, 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 Lord. I was trying to pray. Amen. And I was, because I always had something on me. I always had, had something under the seat. I was always in some kind of altered state. And then I remembered after getting saved, Brother Wally, blue lights come up behind me one time. And I didn't even get nervous. Because I had nothing to hide. I wasn't trying to break the law. I wasn't trying to speak. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord just got my foot and everything. I wasn't trying to speak. Everything was fine. I was, and he went right around me. He was on his way to another call. He won't even, he won't even, as my granny said, he won't even stand in me. <laughs> Y'all know that. He won't even stand in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I realized right then the law had come off of me. The law didn't hold me in bondage anymore because I won't out trying to hide what I was doing and sneak around. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Which are? And he says what they are. They're adultery. Fornication. Which I define... It is intimacy, sex, outside of the covenant of marriage. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how it's defined fornication is. It's not just lewd acts. It's not just uh, uh, sex with multiple partners and all these things. Amen. You can't have a, an affair. You can't have sex outside of the marriage and it glorify God. It's not going to glorify Him. Well, I'm just with one person, God. God don't care. God said that is for the covenant of marriage. That is a reward. That is a gift that I have put in a covenant of marriage to procreate children. Hallelujah. For people. Hallelujah. To be closer with one another. It's a gift. Amen. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get somebody say, get through this list. Get to the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. I am. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness. Idolatry, anything we put before him. Sorcery, modern day sorcery is drugs. Okay? Sorcery then was, uh, you know, wizards and witches making potions, altering the, the state of mind. In modern day sorcery is drugs. Hatred, I talked about racism a while ago. There it is. Hatred, any kind of hatred, and racism is one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Hatred. Contentions, meaning heated disagreements. Jealousies. Outburst of wrath. You have got to get your anger under control. It's not going to glorify God. Come on, get it under control. You can't snap just like that. You'll be so nice to somebody. You'll have somebody that, that may be waiting on you, giving you terrible service in a restaurant, and you will hold your cool for them. But if it was your spouse, if it was your child, the people who mean the most to you in your life, you'll snap on them in three seconds. Come on, somebody. Controlling selfish ambitions. It's all about him. It's all about him. I love that song that Lisa and Lauren and Amanda and all them do. Let it be, let it be you. Let them see you. Let them see you in me. And it's not about me, it's about you. Hallelujah. Dissensions. Those are disagreements leading to discord. Come on. Be careful of that. You might, you might disagree, but come in brotherly love and sisterly love and the love of Jesus Christ. Shake hands and hug and say, we disagree, but I love you and I'm not going to let discord, power discord, come between us. Heresies, false doctrine, false teachings, amen? Things that divide us. Now, there's people, you know, I've often said that people could sit in, in the teachings of the book of Revelation and they might not have the, the rapture belief that I do. They might think that the rapture comes in the middle of the tribulation or whatnot. Uh, you know, 
What, whenever you, you're ready to I'm ready to go in the first round. Take me now, Lord. Come now, Jesus, come. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, I'm talking about heaven or hell issues. Heaven or hell issues. Praise God. Hallelujah. False doctrine. We've we got to be careful of that. Envy, murders, drunkenness. I've heard Pastor Jason Franklin say before when people said, is it okay to have a few cocktails? Is it okay to have a few beers after work? He said, well, you know, it says drunkenness. And sometimes you can drink one or two beers and you can get a little buzz going. You can get a little buzz going. Any altered state of mind. How do we know that the Bible is not defined? Any altered state of mind is drunkenness. I'd rather not even put it out there. I don't want to push it. Whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's 14, or me back in the day, 21. How do we have many it takes? How do, we don't even need to mess with it. How about we just stay away from it and say, that's going to lead to something worse. That's going to lead to something worse. I don't want to do it socially. I don't want to ruin my witness. I don't want to walk up to somebody in a bar with a beer in my hand and go, hey, let's go have a prayer. Let's go pray. You know Jesus. Come on. Do you want people to take you seriously for the kingdom of God? You turn from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, are you going to send people to hell for it? No, I don't send nobody to hell for nothing. I'm just saying, I think it's better to stay away from it. I'm going to raise my children that it's better to stay away from it. That's what I'm teaching in my house. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Revelries. That's loud drunkenness. So it deals with drunkenness and even loud drunkenness. Alright, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not my words, it's the word of God, it's New Testament preaching from the great sky. This is the grace scholar. This is the man. This is Paul. This is the one who started preaching grace, and it even made the, the Christians like Peter and go, "Whoa, this guy's radical. This guy's a little too much." Amen. They loved him, but he was hard to handle. Hallelujah! It's even him saying, "Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God." But the fruit of the Spirit, for those who are saved, it produces love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. You ought to give God a hand clap of hands right now. There is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in it daily. Every day, every day, church, praise God. Finally, this is the last one. I want Sister Lisa to come. This is the last one. We've talked about there's no, going to be no separation, no segregation, no divisions, no sections. Number two, there's going to be 24 7 worship nonstop. Number three, you can't hide sin there because it can't enter there. The fourth thing is there'll be no dwelling on sadness there. There'll be no dwelling on pain and sadness there. Now we know that the Lord gave the Apostle John a vision of what's to come concerning this glorious place. And whenever I talk about heaven, I always like to read this scripture from the book of Revelation chapter 21. It's towards the end of the book. You go ahead and start playing in the background. It says this. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the heaven, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride or adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be His people. God Himself. God Himself. Will be with them. And be their God. And this is what is so profound here. No matter what you're going through today. I want you to remember this. And God will wipe away every tear. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Death saddens us. It burdens us. It stresses us. But there, there will be no more death, nor sorrow, 
nor crying. If you're crying today because you're sad, there's coming a day, hallelujah, lift your head because there's coming a day when He's going to wipe away your tears forever and you'll never cry again. There shall be no more pain. Somebody shout no more pain. No more pain. For the four things have passed away. Then He who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Glory to God. I make all things new. And he said to me, right for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. Somebody shout, it is done. It is done. The same thing he said on the cross. He says now in eternity. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> Amen. Yes, I'll put that in the sermon. Amen. <laughs> Stay thirsty for the water he has. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. Listen to that. To those who overcome, you'll inherit all things. Wouldn't you love to know what all those things are? Amen. You can't handle it. Neither can I. We'll have to wait till we get there. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But then he says this. He reminds. Holy Spirit, speaking through him, says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, people who wouldn't stand for him, people who doubted him, people who sinned and didn't care, people who took life, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Let me tell you something. Sin equals pain. And the reason there's going to be no more pain in heaven is because there's going to be no more sin. Sin is the root to every problem. Most of the catastrophic things that have happened in your life have taken place due to sin. It's time to prepare for the real heaven. Would you stand today? It's time to get ready for the real heaven. I'm sorry to go so long this morning. This is all the time I get to preach all week long. Don't get to preach again until next Sunday. And God's been resting and nestling this message upon me. I pray right now that you can give Him just a few more moments if you can. Through this altar call.